In this video, I'm going to talk about chapter 11 of my book with Roberto. It is about art cycles and Artinian Kronenstein algebras. The definition of Artinian Kronenstein algebra is simple. If we have ideal in n plus 2 variables, and uh, we say that I is Artinian Gorenstein. If the quotient ring uh, for some sigma natural number satisfies this three uh, these three properties, which one is this one? First, uh, the dimension of the graded pieces of degrees is sigma of R must be one. This is going to be the last piece of the ring. And for any i between sigma and zero, we have a pairing, which is simply multiplication of two polynomials. So this must be a perfect pairing in the sense that it is going to be uh, non-degenerate. Remember that by the first property, this is of dimension one. And above a sigma, the ring is just trivial, uh, zero. Uh, we we'll also say that R is uh, an Artinian Gorishtan algebra. The number sigma, we call it the circle of uh, R. Uh, just to remember that uh, this uh, field K, uh, K as a field, and uh, for simplicity, you can take it the field, uh, the field of rational, the complex numbers. So our first uh, important example of uh, Artinian Gorishtan algebra comes from uh, uh, Macaulay's uh, theorem, and basically this is uh, this is already written here. So if you have polynomials n plus two polynomials in a polynomial ring with n plus two variables, and that their degree become uh, di. And that if we assume that they do not induce any variety in PN plus 1, in the sense that uh, the variety induced by this fi is just empty, then uh, this quotient is Artinian Goranishtan of a so called uh, sigma, which is the sum of di minus 1. And this is actually Macaulay's theorem. Before going to introduce the next examples of Artinian Gorishtan algebra, let me introduce this uh, very fundamental definition in algebra. The quotient ideal. If you have ideal of a ring R and just P, the arbitrary element in R, so the quotient uh, ideal is defined this way. So the, this is the all elements in R, such that when you may multiply P with Q, it will be in I. This proposition uh, enables us to produce more Artinian Gorenstein algebra. Uh, so, if I is Artinian Gorenstein ideal with a so called sigma, and if we take P outside uh, of the graded piece mu, uh, then the quotient ideal, this quotient ideal, uh, uh, is going to be of so-called sigma sigma minus mu, and there is another uh, important uh, property that uh, I have to mention that if we have two ideals, uh, Gorenstein and Artinian Gorenstein of the same circle, and if the, their last pieces are the same, then I one must be equal to I two. So we just need uh, to check uh, two ideals are equal in the last piece in order to prove that they are uh, equal. So the proof is, uh, is a very easy exercise in commutative algebra, and I will skip uh, the, the proof, which is here. I now introduce uh, Artinian Gorishtan algebras or idea attached to Hodge cycle. So we start with the hypersurface of dimension n and of degree d. 
and uh, let's set this sigma in this way. You remember that uh, n uh, is going to be even because we are going to discuss Hodge cycles. And uh, so let's z infinity with intersection of some linear pn half plus one with x. This is the, the, the canonical uh, Hodge or algebraic cycle of the hyperspace. Uh, so uh, we will consider this, uh, this this quotient. So everything, all the Hodge cycles are up to this uh, element, which is called uh, also polarization or hyperplane section. So if you have uh, some uh, cycle here, or oh, let's say Hodge cycle here, the associated Artinian or Einstein ideal, uh, its homogeneous piece A is defined by this uh, formula. So what we do, we multiply, uh, so it contains all Q such that if we multiply Q with P of this degree, this is the degree uh, such that at the end, uh, this, uh, this quotient becomes a differential form in the projective space. And if we take the residue, then uh, the integral must be zero for all P. So uh, uh, with the corresponding uh, uh, ring is defined as the quotient. And uh, by definition, the m space for m is strictly bigger than sigma plus one. Remember that sigma is here. Then uh, this uh, r sigma is, is zero. Okay. It is easy to check that i delta is an ideal. But uh, in the next the proposition, we will see this in a different. So let's first uh, uh, introduce this polynomial P delta. Uh, this is by Poincaré duality. I just take the delta, Poincaré dual of delta. This will be element of uh, here. We are in the primitive homology, but with this theorem, there will be some polynomial P delta which uh, this, uh, this differential form here represents delta pt in the wrong cohomology. And, and we have this proposition which says that i, de I delta is basically uh, the quotient of, the, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, p delta in uh, the Jacobian. So remember that this is the Jacobian the ideal generated by all partial derivatives of uh, xi i equal to 0, 1 until n plus 1. And uh, so the previous proposition also will imply that this is of so called of this. Remember, so by, by Macaulay theorem, the Jacobian. Uh, her uh, ideal is of so-called n plus 2 d minus 2. Uh, and the proof is not so difficult. So first we show that uh, the Jacobian ideal is inside the I delta. And for this one, uh, we use uh, this uh, simple property uh, of a differential. And for the moment, forget this one. So how we will use this one for i and half plus one, and actually for a specific omega four, but for the moment, just do not consider this. So the basic idea is that when we integrate uh, this one over delta, this one over delta, this one over delta, this must result in uh, the vanishing that we we, we would like to show this one must be zero because uh, of the definition of the Hodge cycle because i is n half plus i minus one is uh, n half and the differential the integration of the exact form is uh, uh, zero but uh, we cannot apply this one uh, directly why the reason is that these differential forms 
uh, do not induce differential form in Pn plus 1. And so the argument uh, uh, will not work with this one. So we have to modify these two differential forms. And here is uh, made the, the modification. And after doing this modification, which is valid, just uh, work with this one, we can proceed and we can produce, uh, we can continue with the argument and then get this, uh, this uh, integral equal to zero for all p such that uh, such that this quotient is a differential form in the projective space. Now that we have achieved this uh, inclusion, so the rest of the proof follows from this definition of the Poincaré dual. Remember that uh, this guy was Poincaré dual of delta. So automatically we have this uh, this uh, equality and. It turns out that by Carlson Griffiths' de description of a check homology and top product of in hypersurfaces, this guy is zero if and only if this QPP, the product of this guy and this guy, which becomes this guy, is in the Jacobian ring. And from another side, we know that the Jacobian ideal is Artinian Goranestein and uh, of a, well, you know, it's so cool also. And, and, and here we use that the multiplication is a perfect pairing. The multiplication in, in let's say, in CX, G, F. So if this guy for all p is in gf so it must be zero in the in the quotient ring so this means that uh, at the end we will have qp delta in gf so this uh, guy is equal to zero if and only if this is in uh, jacobian ring and the jacobian ideal and then with this, this is enough to prove the identity that we wanted. So it was I delta, if I delta was the quotient ring GF with the P delta, and P delta is constructed from, uh, from the form correct wall of delta. So the next proposition is about uh, uh, the relation between the ideal of cycles and uh, i delta. So if i de if delta is uh, supporting algebraic cycles, then this algebraic cycle has an ideal. So the, its ideal must be inside i delta. And something also very important, if uh, we have a lot of algebraic cycles such that in the primitive cohomology, uh, they uh, produce uh, a one-dimensional law uh, uh, piece, then the sum of all of the, the ideals will be in I delta also. Uh, the proof is again based on uh, on uh, Carlson Griffith's description of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the cohomology of a uh, hypersurface. So if P is a uh, multiple element of the ideal, then so if p is q p tilde q in i z, then we have to prove that this integral is zero. In this meromorphic presentation of the element of the wrong homology, it's not clear why this must be zero. But Carlson Griffiths' theorem uh, says that we can write it uh, at the end in the check homology. There will be a lot of uh, messy differential forms here, and the good point is that uh, this q. QP tilde will be outside. So at the end of the day, this, uh, after writing in check homology, restriction, let's say just not the integral, actually here, the restriction over Z will be possible. And the first thing that we do in the integration, we restrict on the domain of integration. So once we restrict it, uh, then uh, Q uh, is zero, so then everything will be zero and we will get uh, zero here. So this is something that you don't see in this meromorphic presentation 
of the Jerome uh, homology. So the previous uh, proposition leads us to this definition. An algebraic cycle is called perfect if it all it, there are other algebraic cycles. Uh, so, well, let's say one of them is that itself, such that uh, the quality this happens, and what was this equality? And this sum of ideals of i z i's becomes equal, equal to i delta. And our main example of uh, our main example of uh, perfect algebraic cycles are complex intersection uh, algebraic cycle inside hypersurfaces. Maybe for this one, remember that if I write polynomial f uh, in this way, and uh, with f i's and uh, f and a half plus one i, you know, with a proper degree, uh, then of course uh, this guy has a lot of algebraic cycles, and this is. Uh, this algebraic cycle. So uh, between uh, this pair of polynomials f on the f and half plus two, I choose one of them. And uh, let's let's uh, let's pick for example uh, our main algebraic cycle to be f equal to f two blah 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 f and half plus one equal to zero. So the, the point is that uh, all these algebraic cycles have the same uh, homology class up to multiplication with a rational norm. Uh, for example, if we take uh, if we take this uh, this variety inside uh, p n plus one and intersect it with x, this will be its homology class and x will be a multiple of polarization. But when we intersect it in x, we get two algebraic cycles. So up to polarization, so let, let's say this z1 and z2, one is given by uh, extra condition f1 equal to zero, the other one is given by the extra condition f and half plus one equal to zero. So this in the primitive cohomology is, uh, is zero, so this means that at the end we will get z1 equal to minus z2, and let's say uh, it's a homology class, it's primitive homology class. Then we see that the sum of the ideals of all these algebraic cycles is just uh, the ideal generated by f1, fn plus 2. And this is inside uh, i delta. Actually, one has, you have to cut d from here. And now uh, 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 we, we realize that these two ideals, they have uh, the same, the same, uh, they are Artinian Goranishtein of the same so-called. Remember that in order to check, uh, to check that uh, uh, two Artinian Goranishtein ideals are the same, we, we need just to prove that they have the same so-called and the, the last piece in the homogeneous uh, part uh, is the same. So this will imply at the end that i delta is equal to g. My name is Hossein Mubasati and I am going to talk about chapter 12 of my book with uh, Robert. Uh, it's about Hodge locus and some components of uh, the Hodge loci. The definition of Hodge locus using integral is uh, is very simple and uh, we start with the family of its most projective uh, uh, varieties and uh, <clears throat> we take uh, homological cycles I will introduce the homological version of uh, high locus a uh, continuous family of cycles and then we have to take sections omega 1 omega a of the cohomology bundle, not the whole cohomology bundle, but uh, uh, the part which has to do with this piece of the Hodge filtration, f m half plus one. Remember that we have used this uh, piece of the Hodge filtration in order to define the notion of a Hodge locus. And, and so for simplicity, let's take a 
uh, equal to dimension of this piece and let's see so what we do we integrate all these omega i's over delta t and the good point is that these functions will be holomorphic functions uh, in a neighborhood of zero uh, in V. So we have fixed a, a point or the variety x zero. And, <clears throat> and since uh, the integrals are depends on T, this dz, we will get these holomorphic functions. And the definition is here. So the analytic hydrostatic passing through zero and corresponding to the cycle delta, sometimes the way I write delta equal to delta zero, uh, is the analytic variety, uh, this one. So it is given by the zero set of all these integrals. Just uh, remember that all these integrals to be zero will imply that delta is a Hodge, this is by definition of a Hodge cycle. So we just consider the definition of a Hodge cycle in families and instead of uh, uh, when we get uh, a loci in the parameter space. And, uh, and the, the, the another important fact is that uh, we have ideal generated by these holomorphic functions. And actually we want to consider uh, this ideal and not just the analytic variety underlying this uh, ideal. So actually our 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 hash locus will be analytic scheme or analytic space and uh, it is uh, just given by this. So OV delta is just this. So this is uh, let's say it is V here in this state. And so it is the germ of holomorphic function in V uh, divided by this uh, ideal. So this uh, ring might have a uh, nil potent, uh, the ideal might not be reduced, and a lot of bad things which might happen for an ideal must be might be present in our situation. Uh, by the way, I am using uh, two notations for uh, uh, fiber xt is the same as yt. Anyway, um, so when in the dimension 2, the hot locus is the other direction locus. But uh, uh, we, we, for the moment, we are, not, uh, we are not interested in the global structure of the hot locus. For the global structure of the hot locus, we have this theorem by Katani, Delin, and uh, Kaplan. It says that the reducible component the, uh, of the locus of our, uh, well, uh, let's say, in the language that I said, of the Hajj locus, locus uh, or algebraic set. Maybe uh, in a simple uh, uh, word I have to say. So we have defined something which is uh, local. And at the end of the day, uh, this theorem will imply that in our situation that I already defined, these irreducible component, local irreducible component, are part of a algebraic set. Remember that uh, our parameter space is V, everything is inside of V. And uh, so this will be, there will be algebraic uh, set in V, which crosses uh, this point uh, zero. And actually different uh, local irreducible components might correspond to the same algebraic uh, uh, set. But uh, in this uh, talk, we will not uh, talk about this uh, this theorem of the Linkatani Kaplan, which this theorem originally was proved that uh, it is a consequence of the Hodge conjecture, and they were able to prove it without uh, uh, assuming the Hodge conjecture. So I have to say that our goal is to compute the Zariski tangent space of the Hodge locus. So remember that this was an analytic scheme. So uh, with this tangent space refer to V delta, not just as analytic variety, but as analytic scheme. 
And uh, in the in general context, uh, this can be computed as something called infinitesimal a variation of Hodge structures, which is one of the chapters in our book. But it turns out that for hypersurfaces, uh, for hypersurfaces, the description is very uh, elementary. And so uh, here I will discuss uh, this. So in the case of hypersurfaces, instead of uh, the notation y uh, v, I have used the notation x uh, t with, the, let's say, x t fibers. And this is going to be the full family of hypersurfaces in the sense that if we take uh, all homogeneous polynomials of degree d, t will be uh, some open subset of this one for parameterizing smooth hypersurfaces. Anyway, so uh, I have uh, we have to define the Hodge locus inside uh, OT0. And <clears throat> so by Griffith's theorem, we know uh, the part uh, of the Hodge filtration of uh, the hypersurface that we needed for, uh, for definition of our integrals. And this is exactly by uh, uh, Part what we need. This is so. This, this will form a. Uh, this will generate this uh, f and half plus one piece, and so we will need these functions in order to uh, to uh, uh, to define the Hodge locus. So in this case, the Hodge locus will be just uh, uh, the analytic Hodge locus passing through zero point. Will be just a zero set of this one, and then uh, we have to consider it as a scheme. So the ring of function of our high locus will be O T zero divided by this uh, ideal. So remember from our uh, previous video that attached to a hot cycle, we can always. Uh, Construct an Artinian Gronstein ideal and Artinian Gronstein algebra. And so this is the uh, I delta that uh, we have to uh, consider. So, in the case of uh, hypersurfaces, it turns out that we can compute the tangent space of the Hodge locus. And if they define a uh, uh, the Hodge locus next to the as before, and the Zariski tangent space is just this uh, this, where d is the degree of the hypersurface that we have started, and this is actually uh, the thing that we find before defining uh, uh, the before defining this Artinian Gronstein ring. So the proof is basically a calculus. So uh, the idea is that if a, the f depends uh, on a lot of parameters, each monomial in the expression of f has a parameter. And if we make derivation with respect to this uh, t alpha, then, uh, then, uh, uh, then we will have, uh, have uh, uh, we will have a distinct integrate derivation will go inside, and then we will use, we will, uh, use the classical uh, uh, derivation, and then we will have this equality where this Q is uh, derivation of with respect to T alpha. And, and uh, so this is for, uh, for P, which P it, it, it is. So uh, these p's are the ones which comes from the definition of a Hodge locus. We want to compute the linear part of uh, these guys for i less than n uh, half and i n half because these define the notion of uh, Hodge locus. And it turns out that uh, for for in this case we land on again a differential form which is in uh, which is in f n half plus. Uh, one, so by definition of the height cycle or height of it is zero, and just in the case of i equal n half, that we get an integral. Uh, we get an integral which uh, might not be uh, closed. So, so i n uh, 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 
uh, in half. And uh, so uh, the linear part of, uh, of, uh, of the corresponding uh, defining equation of the Hodge locus will be this one. So the tangent space is the kernel of this linear part. And uh, this means that we have to put uh, the delta zero, this equal to zero. So the kernel will be exactly uh, the one that we defined uh, for I delta. So the next corollary is immediate because uh, remember that we had proof that GF P delta, P delta were constructed by the Poincaré duality for uh, delta. This is I delta and then its D pieces are also the same. So at the end of our tangent space uh, uh, will be uh, this, uh, this one. Here more for the uh, sake of completeness, we have repeated the, the proof again here. In the next remaining minutes, I will introduce two uh, class of components for Hodge locus. So the first one is very simple. We consider hypersurfaces uh, given by this kind of Fs. And this has uh, a lot of algebraic, a lot of uh, complete intersection algebraic cycles. For example, this is an algebraic cycle inside this x. So x is uh, uh, given by f equal to zero, projectivization of this guy inside p and plus one. And, and I will, uh, so in the, in the parameter space of a uh, degree d hypersurface, I'll denote by t underline d, the space of uh, these uh, polynomials or hypersurface. So d underlines means uh, the, this collection of all these di's, which are a degree of uh, this f1, f2, fn plus 1. So uh, this is, of course, an algebraic uh, set. But uh, once again, uh, I will uh, consider just uh, as local uh, analytic variety. So the, the first statement uh, is that uh, let me see the analytic branch of TD corresponding to the formation of X, uh, then, then the Hodge locus, and uh, this is the Hodge locus, and this is the one that we define. These are the, the same. Maybe a few words about this uh, VC. And, uh, and so this is the point is that when we consider this zero representing x, x zero, and then we consider uh, this uh, analytic uh, algebraic variety T underline T. So this, is, this might have, uh, this might cross uh, this uh, zero uh, many, many times. And uh, here we just consider one uh, uh, analytic branch of this guy, and we call it this one we z. So anyway, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, this theorem uh, actually. Uh, uh, well, the point is that we can put also uh, uh, a scheme structure here, and uh, uh, something that I skipped this note is uh, strongly alternative Hodge conjecture and so on. That I think I will do another video for this one. But for the moment, just take uh, this identity between two topological spaces. In particular, I am not using uh, I will, I'm not using the 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 scheme structure here. Just consider it as uh, equality of sets. So this theorem appears in uh, Dan's article, uh, but uh, uh, and but uh, without uh, any reason, it puts uh, some extra condition which are not necessary. And I will give a very very simplified version of uh, of, uh, of the proof now. So the basic idea is that all these algebraic uh, 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 couplet intersection algebraic cycles, uh, they are equal uh, uh, up to sign uh, and modulo uh, the polarization. This is uh, because, uh, uh, for instance, if you just take F2 equal to zero, 
f2 equal to 0, fn plus uh, 1 equal to 0, and then these two guys equal to 0. So you will get z1 plus z2 sum, which is a multiple of the polarization, the infinity. z1 correspond to the f1, z2 correspond to f, uh, fn plus 2. And let's take the homology class. And at the end, this is z1 will be minus z2 modulo of polarization. <coughs> so that's why we um, uh, we have this statement for uh, complete. So uh, at the end, it turns out that uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, ideal is uh, inside here, and they have uh, they had both these ideals are uh, are. Uh, Artini and Goranishtan of the same circle and the pro with the classical properties of Artini and Goranishtan ring, we will uh, conclude that there are equality here and 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 the simple calculation shows that actually this guy here is the tangent to space uh, of Vz at the uh, at the point that we are doing computations. So our next example of a component of Hodge locus is obtained by taking a sum of a two linear nonlinear cycles. Uh, so we will take a hypersurface and that, that inside the hypersurface we consider two uh, projective space of uh, and dimension and half. They will intersect in each other in PM, and uh, we will assume that this uh, this condition holds. Uh, in the proof, uh, it will be clear why this condition pops up in a natural way. So, you can consider the Hodge locus uh, corresponding to some of uh, these homology class of these two cycles. Here are our check. Uh, they are uh, uh, <coughs> any any integers. Uh, not equal to zero, and <clears throat> and here we have considered the intersection of two Hodge uh, locus. So uh, P n half uh, is a complete intersection of type one 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 one, um, and uh, so by our previous theorem, uh, we have this uh, V P n half is the same as the V Hodge locus. The homology class of P and L. So, and so basically, this guy is the loci of hypersurfaces uh, uh, containing two P and half, P and half check intersecting each other in some P. So, this means that this, uh, this, uh, this Hodge locus. Uh, for this uh, 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 this Hodge locus uh, parameterize uh, this uh, this two uh, uh, algebraic uh, cycles. Uh, the reason why this is a state has uh, as a conjecture is that uh, uh, the next results are only for x zero x zero uh, x or x zero uh, Fermat. And uh, our uh, uh, our computations are uh, done just uh, around Fermat. So, what is the uh, the next results? Uh, uh, okay. So uh, maybe this uh, let's say uh, taking Fermat. Fermat has a lot of linear cycles. Let's in our case we are taking uh, these linear cycles. Uh, which intersect uh, in, uh, in in some uh, uh, <clears throat> in some uh, Pn that the two these are primitive with our unity. So uh, we can uh, prove the conjecture to, uh, conjecture twelve three in, in this case. So maybe I have to say that the proof uh, basically in the, the, in the in this first article it is based on the computer. calculation of the uh, 
uh, of the tangent space of the Hodge locus. And uh, later, Roberto, in his uh, thesis, uh, was able uh, to, to give a theoretical proof. And once you go through the proof, you will see, you will see how this condition pops up uh, in a natural way. So the proof consists of uh, two uh, steps, uh, the theoretical proof, uh, which is basically uh, due to Roberto. Uh, first, we have to compute P delta for this delta P uh, and half and uh, P and half check that I showed you. It's explicit. So for this one, we call it P1. And uh, for this one, let's call it P2. And you see that uh, we can get explicit expression for P1 and P2. It's uh, this one, R1, Q, R2, Q, and then R1, R2, R, uh, Q here. So they are polynomial in X, X i's with uh, 2 d roots of uh, unity. And then and, uh, so once this is done, then we can forget geometry. And, uh, and uh, uh, we, our uh, the statement that we have to prove is, uh, is this one. And uh, actually, Roberto was able to prove uh, in a, more, a more general identity. And the identity is uh, this one. So this, uh, this, uh, this the intersection of these ideals at the end uh, is the same of this one. And this uh, is only valid in these, uh, uh, in these cases. And for simplicity, I will skip the proof. Uh, 